Morning, good morning, good afternoon, Capsules. Welcome back to the channel. Alan this here, and this time we are going back to the shipyard for another fitting guide. And as you can see from my anger, we will be looking at the Grista Worm frigates. Um, for this particular ship, I was looking um, at something that would that I would use to farm the special anomalies, mainly Inquisitors and Scut in uh, in um, high sec or low sec uh, environment but mainly mainly high sec um, i wanted something very nimble um, so fast and and agile so that i could move from system to system see if there, there, there was um, a special anomalies in and uh, agile as well because if there was then i would like to be able to out run and outpace anyone who would be finishing and potentially steal um, the loot that would still be uh, uh, available there and so out run the, um, the the other player ships and be able to get the, um, the static loot on so all at at our, our disposed of. the other point is if I wanted to be able to farm then potentially I would um, go in system stay still farm the uh, anomalies there until a special one pop and so i wanted to have some some heavy dps um, just to be able to be efficient at clearing out uh, anomalies both to make them pop faster and also when um, a special one would be uh, would be there and in i would be able to dispose of rats as soon and as fast as possible so to avoid another player coming in and trying to get at my um, hard-earned loot. So being a, a, a drone pilot mainly, uh, the natural choice was the worm, uh, because uh, for, for the PvE uh, type of encounters that I was um, um, more looking at, this was really the ship that fitted um, the criteria I, I was um, striving to, um, to, uh, uh, to achieve. So now that you have the context of the um, of the ships, let's take a look at the ship itself. So looking at the, the ship three, the worm is a Grista Parrot. Um, so um, using drone as the main um, offensive capabilities and shield for the defense. Um, as you can see from the, the short description, so the roll bonus for the worm is really the small damage. 200% uh, means that for each drone that you have, and that there are two um, small drone base on the ship, basically one drone equals three drones with that, um, that base damage. And you get a hefty um, bonus as well in terms of EHP, meaning that uh, in a PvP setting, your drones will be a bit more enduring uh, uh, over the enemy fire because um, as you all know in, in PvE the rats don't shoot back at your drone so you do not not expect to lose uh, um, uh, anyone. Overall the ship has um, two drone bays, two high slots uh, which means basically four uh, offensive uh, weapon capabilities, three mid slot, three lows and three of each of the internal rigs making it a, a very versatile and, and quite powerful ship indeed. As regards the, um, the other uh, ship bonuses, so the advanced small drone operation will still further enhance your uh, drone damage skill for, for small drone, so you can go up to 50% with the, with the skill maxed and you can get a bit of range as well. But as we can see later on, range is not really of the essence, you're not going to be um, uh, um, kiting uh, very far in this build because anyway you, you try to synergize the damage in between your high slot and drone uh, uh, weapons. Frigate, advanced frigate will give you um, a little boost in terms of uh, missile or torpedo kinetic damage. What is really nice here is that basically it doesn't specify the size of the, the, the missile that you can you can use to get the bonus. Compared to the drone, where it is uh, specifically linked to the, the, the small drone, in this case, basically you can fit any size of, um, of missile that you rig can cope and you 
could benefit from uh, the damage. But then again, 50% um, either in kinetic or thermal is nice and you get an additional 4% shield resistance. So 20% if uh, fully skilled, meaning that you can um, actually get a fairly high uh, natural resistance for, for, your, um, for your ship. Other than that, um, the characteristics are, are pretty straightforward. We have um, um, a flight velocity of, of uh, 350, which is uh, which is quite good actually. Defense is nearly uh, 4K, and we'll see the spread in between the shield and the armor internal um, when we get up to the details of the fittings. Uh, power grid, so we have uh, a 64 megawatts. And you will see that really your your power grid is um, the key things in in in, in fitting this um, this baby. So uh, this is something that uh, we'll need to pay attention to later on. Capacitor size is is um, quite okay, and the uh, cargo hold is quite standard for a ship of uh, of this size. So nothing special. In terms of shield resistance, you see that um, the the shield is quite um, uh, average as well. You don't have any specific bonuses. And you can see here that already the EM is at zero, so having the uh, advanced frigate uh, bonus will give you a 20% uh, flat increase in EM, making it a, a bit more uh, sturdy against a laser-based ship. Now, once we have cleared that, let's go to the fittings. And so, as mentioned before, and uh, you will see here that I'm not necessarily uh, different in my way of thinking is that uh, other video that you can find on the um, on on the web about this um, about this ship. The the goal will be to fit um, the largest missile uh, that you can on the um, on the ship. Okay, so large, of course, you don't have the the power grid to do that, but medium, basically, um, if you expand a bit your power grid either through skills or through internals you can start getting something which is um, useful and as you can see here i was able to fit two mk5 medium rapid uh, missile launcher so uh, medium is better than the uh, the small uh, uh, missile even the torpedo one um, you will get a better dps a better range so there is there is absolutely nothing um, for going back to the small missile launcher except um, making it a bit more easy on the power grid management and that is um, where you will see I'm a bit frustrated about uh, the ship is that I, I'm not yet able um, to reach the end state for that ship and that's why most likely um, there will be a part two for um, this, uh, this shipyard on, on Worm because I'm, I'm really unsatisfied with what I, I did achieve so far. And it's not because it's not um, a good setup, it's just because my skill is not uh, enough and we'll delve into the details of um, exactly what skill you need, but already you can see uh, the combination of weapons means that you need to invest in medium missile, you need to invest in drones, and you will need to invest in frigate engineering because if you want to expand your power grid without rigging it, then you need to go very deep into, into that skill, most likely even into the um, expert uh, level. But anyway, the uh, uh, MK7, you can see already the impact of the um, um, ship bonuses. Uh, what well, you see on the thermal and the kinetics, um, the, the, the damage type has increased um, quite significantly from, from the base. And overall, I get um, um, 85 more or less DPS from the missile launcher, which is um, quite nice. And uh, range, I think, is about 16 kilometers. Yeah, 16, 17 kilometers which is already good, but I still need to um, uh, expand that in training medium um, missile um, to further boost the DPS and the range. Mid slot, so fairly standard um, load. So I got um, Warp Scrambler. Warp Scrambler is there to basically manage the, the, the fast uh, frigates that could come um, onto you and that would be using uh, a micro warp drive then you can uh, stop the 
that in their track and use the Webifier, which is the uh, uh, other uh, medium slot that I've, that I've rigged uh, uh, at the moment, uh, which will then slow them down and make you both your missiles and your drone much more uh, efficient at uh, applying their full damage uh, potential. So those are the two medium rigs. Uh, the third one is empty. It's empty because at the moment my per grid is maxed out. Okay, so we've seen that we have started from a 64, already at 87, because I have some, some internals, I have some skills, but I cannot fit anything else at the moment. So um, I'm kind of stuck there, but most likely the third one would be um, a Nosferatu. That's what I'm considering at the moment, um, because uh, from a capacitor perspective, I'm not cap stable and far from it. And so I would like to have a bit more flexibility here in being able to run both the hardener and the shield booster. Drone wise, um, I went for a mix. Uh, this is this is my preference. I, I don't like having a, a fixed uh, setup for my for my drones and, and relying on a single type. So um, usually what I try to do is combine the high slot with the drone. So if, for example, I take lasers, uh, for the high slot, then I would go for uh, mainly um, explosive uh, for the drones so that I would have the high slot for uh, dealing out the, the shields and then the drones would take care of the armor and the internals basically you don't really uh, care about because um, you get about the same level of resistance uh, for uh, any type of uh, damage being applied. So in this case, with the missile having a spread in between um, the four damage type, which is more or less equivalent, but the ship giving a slight damage into thermal and kinetic, I went for the other extreme. So I went for uh, EM based drone, so an Acolyte Mark 7, that's the, the best I can afford, not yet uh, tech level 9. And then I went for the Warrior for the explosive damage type, which will give me a, um, a nice equilibrium in between able to take out shield rapidly or armor rapidly and getting more or less um, as efficient whatever the, um, the resistance I'm trying to get over shield or armor. Uh, low, slow, low slot wise, um, so I want to be able to speed tank, so I went for a smuggler, a small afterburner. You could you could put a, a micro wrap drive, but because of the limitation on my power grid, I'm not able to. Okay, so the, um, the, the, the uh, micro wrap drive takes a, a, a bit more in terms of power grid requirements, so I was not able to. I've seen some builds which do both the um, uh, afterburner and an MWD um, just because of the uh, more the, the PVP setting if you're going for null or, or low sec. That makes sense. So whatever you are scrambled or web, you still have some some capabilities to escape should you should you need to. But on my hand, I was more for seeing a PVP a PVE sorry uh, environment. So the afterburner will do well. With that, I'm able to reach a speed of about uh, one 1.2 k meter a second, which I, I would like to improve. I have speed. I've seen speed um, uh, over. 1.5k and this is what I, I would like to reach as well uh, so most likely I still need to up my, my frigate um, a piloting skill. Uh, shield tank so of course I went for um, a shield booster small shield booster again need to cope with the uh, uh, power grade limitation because I wanted to have the uh, um, the, the medium missile launcher. I will see whether if I upgrade the power grid, I can do something a bit better, like a medium one, um, just just to be to be seen. But otherwise, from the the test run that I've been doing, it, it was it was okay with a, a, a small uh, shield booster. And then the last piece on the low rig is um, an adaptive, just to strengthen again the uh, the overall resistance uh, uh, over the board. Um, is it really necessary, useful? No. I mean, this is something that, that you could potentially change uh, depending on the setting, depending on what you, you want to do. If you want to get a bit more DPS, you could do for a, a drone damage amplifier. Of course, at the moment, I don't have the power grid requirement uh, for that um, because this one is, is using just a single uh, a megawatt of energy. But otherwise, as I've said, you could go for a micro drive as well. 
So all depends, you have some flexibility here. That, that's for me is the one that you can change and adjust depending on what you want to do. On the internal, so of course this is a drone ship. So I went for a drone fire power augmenters, so 15, flat 15% 15 um, uh, damage. Same for the speed augmenter, so the activation time uh, less 10%. That's the best combination for me in terms of uh, uh, getting your, your DPS on the on the drone. The third one again, I mean you can you can see whatever you like, uh, more of a glass cannon, high DPS, or something a bit more balanced, which is what I I went for, and so this is why I went for an anti EM screen, just to uh, strengthen further my shield and rebalance the overall resistance of the ship. In terms of the engineering rigs, so of course, uh, power grid, I said, is, is essential. So I went for the um, uh, ancillary power grid route 2. I didn't have the money or was not willing to invest the money for uh, level 3. And I was not uh, also considering, as I've seen in some build, to have all three slots uh, converted with uh, the power grid router just to get the extra um the, the extra grids and be able to uh, flex on the on the, um, the modules that you put in medium and, and low slot so i'll see whether i can skill that up and compensate but i wanted to get the flexibility on the internals to do something else which is basically increasing my base speed so i went for an auxiliary thrusters 10 percent uh, flight velocity adjustment uh, again um, a, a bit of limitation on the on the isks as I'm not on the test server and um, everything that um, that I, I showcase is something that I, per I personally purchased. So uh, I, I need to be cautious as well on my own expense, but potentially this is something that I can upgrade over time. Third one, uh, I'm still undecided. Um, it will really depend on what will be the overall boost I get when I push the engineering so far. My initial thinking is something to increase my, my capacitor management, so most likely something to boost the overall cap, uh, pushing maybe a, a bit over five minutes uh, if possible. But if if I can run cap stable with the uh, skill um, or at, at a sufficient level, then potentially um, something to accelerate target lock might be uh, might be good um, as well, or maybe a second. Um, um, power grids just just to accommodate for the the, the modules that I would like to uh, to add in so it needs needs to to be seen whether the Nosferatu as I said could over could compensate for the cap management and then I have a little more flexibility in terms of what I can do with the third slot a bit undecided um, at the moment so that's it for the the ship in itself so now if we go back and take a look at what would be the um, skill needed for this uh, this baby as i said um the ship in itself is a is a very strong investment so if i show you today um i am over 600 million on that ship so if I go on the combat log and look at the insurance, you can see here that the market, the estimated market price is around 630 million ISK. And the, the, the fit is not yet um, completed. Ideally, I would like to progress to um, officer or dead space missile launcher, which will increase the, the, the price of the ship even further. So, um, not something that I, I will be very keen on on losing anyway but for that kind of price tag basically you're reaching the same level of money that i have for my prophecy my prophecy is a bit around 700 million and with that i can and i can very comfortably afk tier 8 tier 9 encounters even the 20 million one i can do um so you need to balance exactly what you what you you paying for okay you have a very very strong frigate uh, overall dps over, over 250 i would like to push it uh, up to the um, 300 uh, potentially even 350 dps landmark but um, it will require an additional investment and this is where the skill is really crucial 
So of course, in terms of the, the frigate commands, you have seen that the advanced frigate command will give you additional DPS um, um, for for your, your, your missile launchers. Uh, so it is really important. You see that I'm already uh, a 5-4. I'm, I'm scaling for the, the, the fifth one and I will see whether I move into the expert. But to be honest, um, th this is a bit of, of a disappointment because I'm, I'm, I'm really using this ship for a very specialized task. I'm usually more of a cruiser, battle cruiser pilot. So having to invest in that, um, that amount of skill point for the frigate is kind of a, 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 a bit of a waste for uh, for me so that that of course is the, the first point shield operation well shield um, uh, operation advanced shield operation will help you manage the uh, cap management on using the booster shield hardening you see that uh, I'm, I'm quite low because most of my ship are armor tanks and so um, I'm, i didn't invest yet into the, uh, the, the the shield hardening or the, the shield operation by itself so it's a bit on the low side that may help as well with the the, the cap management on the long run and making me able to uh, to be more cap um, stable defense wise of course the uh, frigate defense upgrade is a nice boost i don't think that i will invest uh, much more in there i'm already 5-3 and I don't think that the, the additional um, shield or armor will really matter um, in, that, uh, in that context. Engineering wise, uh, yes, frigate engineering. This is where I'm, I'm really feeling the lack uh, um, at the moment. So I'm already 5.3, skilling for 5.4. I will go 5.5 and unlock the uh, expert. And, and go back and, and and try to go at minima I would say 553 554 to see where that um, that bring me in terms of um, um, rig and overall rig uh, capacity because this is really really where you have the need to expand uh, to be able to use the medium uh, missile launcher to their full extent and having maybe a better version than the uh, MK7 that I'm running at the moment. So missile wise, of course, you will go into the, the medium. So you see there again, I'm 4-4, four, four. I'm not um, heavily skilled in uh, in missiles operation. So potentially this is where I'm, I'm going to invest. Um, you see that the, the, the upgrade is even worse. I'm only 3-0. So there, most likely, I'm gonna I'm gonna boost it, make a, 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 at least four four, uh, and that will give me a, a bit a, a bit of range and an additional DPS on the missile launcher, and that will help me boost and reach my target of um, a nice spot around 350 DPS, um, hopefully. Um, drone wise, of course, um, I'm a drone pilot, so I, I'm already four four in the small drone because, um, to be honest. The, uh, the drone really shines when you start uh, looking at the, at the cruisers in terms of frigate. You only have the Tristan, which is a nice frigate, but the main DPS doesn't come from the drone. Uh, more on the, um, on the high slot weapons and the destroyers I can, uh, are kind of uh, okay-ish. But uh, when you get to a, a Vexel Navy issue or a Prophecy, then really the, the medium drone are where the, um, the value lies. So that's why I didn't invest much. The only um, uh, thing which is uh, really nice is uh, with the, um, uh, the the small drone upgrade. When when you you skill them up, you gain additional timing on your drone damage amplifier and that is where again um, not for this particular ship but for my other ship i will continue to train the uh, the, the, the the drone skill by themselves but they are already um, quite good i still need to boost the uh, advanced small drone upgrade that will boost the the, the dps um, of the drone so i will get an additional um, a 20 percent more dps out of the drone which again will help me uh, reach the, the the target dps that i'm i'm looking at so uh, as you can see quite extensive training that i still need to um uh, to perform uh, uh, in there just to make the ship uh, and to land the ship where um, i wanted it to uh, to be 
um, in terms of a capability. So it's not that the ship by itself is a bad investment, it's just that it requires a lot of correlate um, uh, investment in your in your skill point. And if you're if you are not um, a frigate pilot like like I am, then uh, it, it will mean that in in the time you buy it and and identify exactly where you're lacking then uh, it can take some time to reach the uh, optimal um, efficiency. In terms of uh, showcasing the performance, so um, I won't do that in this episode. Uh, I did try a tier 8 and, um, encounters. I was managing quite well the first wave, the second wave went okay-ish, but I was uh, starting to run um, low on the on the shield and the cap so potentially i would have had to uh, walk out of combat to region uh, at a station or in in um, in space before moving back to the third wave which is something that i, I i'm not liking besides i didn't design uh, or buy the ship to run encounters i have a much better ship for that that will clear a, a, a tier 8 or a tier 9 encounters in like 15 20 minutes max this this one would take a, a a bit longer and that's not the primary objective for which i i i want it uh, it for but when i will have upskilled it i will do a tier 8 just as a benchmark so that you can see exactly where i land into uh, into the dps mode and um the efficiency the overall efficiency of the ship and that that is all for today hope you enjoyed the content if so well um, feel free to uh, like it will uh, improve my visibility on the on the algorithm subscribe to the channel if you feel the content is uh, is valuable and please feel free also to add comment if you have suggestion on improving the, the video quality or the build uh, i'm always open to have a constructive discussion on uh, either subject they are they are more than welcome and um, there will be a second uh, episode for uh, this particular ship because as i said i am not entirely satisfied for where i am uh, at the moment in the meantime fly safe enjoy the game and see you in the next episode